Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Monocrat Megatank, also known as a live action movie interpretation of Not Megatron, had he appeared in Transformers Bumblebee. Now for those of you looking to add this guy to the collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at Show Z store, so for that of course I shall pack a link down in the description box below and honestly I've been so excited to actually get my hands on this guy. As many of you know I was a huge fan of all of those G1 inspired B-movie designs that we saw in the movie and Megatron sadly was really the only big character that was missing from the lineup. Until now, Monocrat have taken it upon themselves to basically take the G1 Megatron design, stylize it enough so that it fits in with the live action movie aesthetic, and overall I think the final outcome is awesome. Now before we delve in and take a look at Megatank himself, we'll very quickly go over some of the included accessories, and the largest of which is this awesome looking sword. You can see that in terms of detailing, it looks fantastic, and if anything kind of reminds me of the sword that I believe came packaged with the Combiner Wars and Menasaur. You can see in terms of paintwork it looks really nicely done we've got some purple accents as well as some gold and metallic details and overall it definitely looks like a sword that this version of megatank would in fact actually wield on the Cybertronian battlefield. Now when you crack this guy out of the packaging, he will come pre-installed with this rather peculiar looking head sculpt. This is the only way that I believe they could have got round actually kind of avoiding copyright, so you can see that it is literally just a blank silver face, and to be honest, I'm actually quite confused as to why they decided to include this at all. Surely they should have just given us a headless Megatron with these two alternate face sculpts, but nevertheless you can see it has in fact actually been painted fully, however as we spin our attention here to the base, it is a little more simpler in terms of design when in comparison to say this alternate head which does have the ball joint inserted as well as a hinge joint now you can see in regards to skull work this looks fantastic this kind of has a more maniacal smile that is renowned for Megatron you can see there he looks really really awesome and the sculpt work across the board is fantastic. Now there is a slight variation between this almost smiling head sculpt and the more stern expression that I've got already inserted onto the figure. You can see that the sculpt and the paintwork on this is just absolutely incredible. As mentioned previously, this is basically the G1 Megatron design with a ton load of mechanical surface detailing actually applied to him. The head sculpt looks really awesome. I love the almost bucket helmet design that we've got going on. You can see the fantastic sculpt work here for the mouthpiece as well as for the eyes and even as we turn our attention here from a side perspective that there just looks so so nicely done and you'll notice that across the board the paintwork for this figure is in fact immaculate it's a really nicely done looking figure you can see here for the chest piece rather simplistic in terms of design they have left the Decepticon silhouette so that for those of you who perhaps own some of those toy hack stickers you can go ahead and actually insert one of those onto the chest piece of which I'll be doing after I shoot this review but even as we turn our attention here to a bird's eye perspective you can see all of that amazing mechanical detailing that actually goes into the shoulders as well as the neck section itself. As we take a look here at the torso, this just looks remarkable. We've got a mixture of metallic gold as well as red. Overall, incredibly G1 inspired. And if Megatron does make an appearance in the upcoming Rise of the Beast movie, this is exactly how I would love him to look. You can see the biceps too have been painted and sculpted so nicely. And as we spin our attention here to the back of Megatron, literally it's been detailed and painted just as nicely as the front. We've got that traditional almost G1 scope which sticks up here from the back. I think this overall design has come out really, really well done. And as we just work our way around the back of the arms as well as the back of the thighs and legs, he cleans up so nicely. And you can see some fantastic sculpt as well as paintwork. Now, as we flip our attention here to the front, of course, we've got the iconic G1 Megatron Fusion Cannon, and my goodness, this is an absolute beast in hand. This thing is huge. It's almost as massive as the actual figure himself. Now, this is removable, so I guess you could kind of count this as an accessory in itself, but you can see in terms of sculpt work, overall, it just looks incredible. Such a nice update on that traditional G1 Megatron design. I think the sculpt work looks fantastic. You can see once again some really nice dry brushing detail. Definitely does harken back to some of those 3.0 DLX offerings. And even as we flip here to this side, it just looks so awesome. Now this does in fact actually have an LED embedded within it. So if we push this button, it will cause the fusion cannon to illuminate this really awesome burning orange. So you can definitely having blasting down Autobot on the battlefield, which I thought was a super nice touch. We'll set this here off to the side for now, but as we just Take a look here at some of the details of the forearms. I love this almost singed effect that you'll notice throughout the figure. It definitely does give him a war-torn appearance. And overall, it just looks fantastic. Even the fingers there have got some nice metallic silver applied to them just to make him look weathered. And the thigh pads look awesome. As so does the inside of the legs. You can see all of that amazing mechanical detail. 
And then as we just take a look at the base of the foot, very, very B-Movie Optimus Prime-esque in terms of design. As for those of you who are unaware, most of those Bumblebee movie characters did in fact actually share components, which I thought was a really, really nice touch. Now, in regards to Megatron's head sculpt itself, this too also possesses an LED function, and the same can also be said for the maniacal smile. So just to showcase that, you do have to pop off this top section of the head, which can be easier said than done, to be honest. I would have much rather had a push switch much like we saw on the fusion cannon, but we just wriggle that section off. We can then flick this switch here, and you can see how the eyes, much like the cannon itself, will illuminate an awesome burning orange. And something which I was a huge fan of is that the batteries do already come pre-installed and included fresh out of the packaging. So he's good to go from the offset and that really does complete the look of the figure. Overall, a fantastic looking piece. Now, in regards to articulation, in all honesty, from the knees upwards, it's just as poseable as say the likes of a DLX figure. It really is just kind of the lower section of the legs of which personally, I think slightly restricted due to the fact that this guy transforms. But as far as the head is concerned, if we just hinge this section up it will extend a hinge and ball joint which allows him to look down that far as well as up to that far tilt side to side as well as of course rotate left to right so a fantastic range where that's concerned real ratchet joints here at the shoulders so these can click forwards and backwards and can rotate the full 360 the shoulder pad will hinge out of the way to accommodate for roughly 90 degrees which once again is fantastic full rotation at the bicep as well as a ratcheted joint here at the elbow which can bend to 90. Here at the wrists these can swivel the full 360, hinge back and forth and the fingers are indeed fully articulated at various different joints of which once again I was so impressed with. So you can see we've got approximately three individual segments here for the fingers alone and the thumb I believe also has got the same range. So we've got a ball joint, a hinge joint at where I presume the knuckle would be and then another hinge joint there at the base. Overall a great range of posability and then as we come here to the torso we do get a full waist rotation as well as very surprisingly a full ab crunch you can see that can crunch all the way forwards and even as we spin our attention here to the back it actually doesn't look too bad of course there's some hollowness but depending on how far you actually crunch him forwards you can kind of conceal that which i actually thought too was a nice touch as we come here to the hips upon first glance they are incredibly restricted they're unable to move forwards and backwards but this is where monocrat have in fact actually incorporated some drop down hips so just to demonstrate that you basically just want to shift this section here all the way down just so you can see the difference between how they are compressed and how they are dropped down this does allow for approximately a 90 degree range of motion also on a very solid ratchet joint forwards as well as also going backwards fantastic range the full splits here on a very heavy duty ratchet joint, a thigh swivel, as well as a double joint here at the knee, fully reinforced once again with a really nice ratchet joint. And then finally, as we come here down to the lower section of the foot, it's not bad, but it's definitely not great. So really and truly, we do just get an ankle rocker pivot, which can go side to side. It does also expose some nice mechanical detail and the toe itself can hinge downwards due to transformation. So no swivel, no tilt forwards and backwards, which I actually think is the only thing letting this guy down in the articulation department. But other than that, for the most part, I think they've done a smashing job. Paint work, sculpt work, the overall design of this Megatron really does blend into some of those other Bumblebee movie designs. And overall, I'm just so impressed at not only the look of the figure, but also the feel. The materials they've used are incredibly durable, and he does in fact actually have quite a significant amount of die cast packed into him as well, which once again, I thought was a really nice touch. Now, turning to some size comparisons, as mentioned previously, this Mega Tank is massive. He absolutely exceeded my expectations upon cracking him out of the packaging. But here we have Mega Tank compared alongside the 3.0 DLX Optimus Prime, based on, of course, Bumblebee. And I think these guys look great with one another, not only in terms of a design aspect, but also in terms of actual scaling. I've always thought that Megatron should be bigger than Optimus Prime, much like we saw in Transformers Prime. And I think that if they were to appear next to each other in a future live action movie this is definitely what personally I'd like to see on screen and for those of you wondering yes I definitely think in terms of a visual this mega tank looks perfect being displayed alongside some of the other live action Bumblebee movie characters and quickly running through a variety of comparisons here we have mega tank compared next to the 3-0 DLX Soundwave, Bingo Toys Wave Man, Cyber Factory Starstorm, 3-0 DLX Bumblebee, 
And finally, the Takarotomi Masterpiece MPM Optimus Prime, also based on, of course, Bumblebee. And if I were to be honest, I do think the scale here is way off. So for those of you who are planning to add this guy into an almost MPM collection, personally, I don't think it's going to work out all that well. But for those who do own some of the 3.0 DLX offerings, such as their version of B-Movie Optimus Prime, I really think that is where he's going to be best suited. Now, turning to the transformation of Mega Tank to begin with, you're going to want to remove the Fusion Cannon. We can then take this tab collapse that in like so, take this section, rotate it so that it is now facing the top, and then swivel this piece around, and with the aid of either a spudger or a flat-headed screwdriver, you'll then want to take the tab that we'll use to connect it for in tank mode, and just slide that up and set this here off to the side. We can then turn our attention here to the knees. Now you are indeed going to want to take the lower ratchet joint of the knee and click that backwards, which will allow for some clearance so that we can essentially take the knee pad and compress that in and then ratchet that back into place. Come to this side and repeat the same process. We can then take the thumbs and just ensure they are squished into the palm of the hand. Turn your attention here to the back, take the scope, pull this forward, rotate that there out to the side so that we can just get it out of the way for now. This particular piece is indeed tabbed into the back plate, so you're going to want to shift this away from the body. And the way this actually slides down is at a slight angle. So you're going to want to take it and shift it this way. So just to demonstrate that, just take this section here and shift that down until it does click into place just like so. We can then spin our attention here to the top section of Megatron. And now basically just disengage this chest piece Pull the arms out to the side, take this section, shift that forwards, and then this section here will also collapse forwards so that we're left with something along the lines of this. Now you're going to want to take the shoulders. You can see here we have a swivel joint. Rotate these here all the way so that the front is now facing the back and come to this side and rinse and repeat. We're then going to want to take the ab crunch, crunch this here all the way forwards so that you're left with something that looks along the lines of this. And then as we just turn our attention here to the back, you'll want to lift this section up and rotate this here all the way around so that basically the head of Megatron is now facing towards the back. Then come back here to what was the front, take this piece, hinge that out of the way just to allow once again for some clearance. The same can also be said here for this scope. And then you'll want to extend this section here down take the head, collapse this down, and then this panel will shift forwards for now. And just raising the camera up so that you guys can get a better perspective as to what's going on, you're going to want to take these shoulder pads, hinge these sections out, swivel those here just like so, and then basically just prop them there. Come to this side, and of course repeat the same process, Let's swivel this around, snap that there into place. In regards here to the arms, rotate those, so that we're left with something along the lines of this. Bring the two halves together. Personally, I wouldn't recommend actually tabbing them into place just yet, as there are a few more steps that we need to complete. So to ensure that the ratchet joints are all straightened out, the inside of the arms are in fact actually on a spring-loaded mechanism. So you're going to want to dip this section in, which will then allow us to shift this here forwards all of the way, and then come to this side, once again, ensure that, that forearm and bicep is fully straightened. Collapse that in. And shift that section all the way down until it does in fact actually click into place. It is now that we can take the two halves, snap those together, and then these panels here will also collapse along the side. We can then take this, ensure that both of the hands are tucked within and then just snap that there over the top. And that is essentially the entire rear section of the tank fully transformed for now. You'll then want to come here down to the mid section of Megatron, turn your attention to the back. And then in regards to this plate, it will disengage. And then you'll also want to take this section, hinge this forward as this will tuck into this cavity and this tab that you can see will peg into this slot. Now this is easier said than done, especially the first couple of times. So you do have to apply quite a reasonable amount of force to get it wedged in. So of course, just dip that in there. And then it is all about getting that tab connected into that slot. So you can see it does go in there really securely. 
come here now to the underside and you're basically going to want to take this plate, detach this here for now, which will free up the hips. So we can now hinge these out to the sides and do the same for this side. Take this section and recess that inwards. Now you want to get Mega Tank essentially laying on his back as we'll begin working here on the legs. Now, once again, much like the upper torso, there are definitely a few steps of which are super, super hard to follow within the instructions. So as we turn our attention here to the side, this does in fact actually slide backwards, just like so. And then it will also come out on a spring-loaded mechanism and we'll want to shift this up come now to the inside of the leg and the only difference with this is that these do not slide out and they only slide upwards and we'll then want to hinge this instead of up down just like so come to this side and repeat the same process so slide this down hinge this up and also rotate this up come to the inside of the leg pull this section out and rotate it down we can then flip mega tank here on his front and then you'll want to take this piece here detach that just like so and then rotate this here all the way around now whilst you're doing that we'll then want to take these sections disengage those and hinge those backwards just like this and then extend all of these joints now this can definitely be really difficult to get the hang of especially the first time transforming him so basically this tab is going to lock into this slot so position it accordingly and then as we bring this down this will almost shift into place so you're just going to kind of want to feed this here into position can definitely take quite a bit of time to get the right position so just shift that there into place and as you can see it is fully locked in and isn't going nowhere we can then take here at the knee rotate this here all the way around so that the front is now facing the back and then as we come here to the thigh armor this will detach and we'll swivel all the way around and we'll snap into its new configuration. Repeat the exact same process here for this side. So open this section out. Make sure that that tread has also come out with it rotate this around now unfortunately sadly for me this section does in fact actually have a missing component so we don't have the additional flap that you'll see here so i'll definitely have to contact shows stores replacement part service as i've mentioned so many times on the channel they are amazing for replacement part pieces but it really shouldn't be an issue on your item so we can then collapse that into place and then just snap that there into place we can then rotate here at the knee come to this thigh pad detach that rotate this around and that will just rest there into place and then we can take the foot collapse this section down and repeat the same process now as we flip him back over you'll once again want to ensure that those hips have stayed in the position that i showcased earlier on as we're now going to flip out this panel now much like the fusion cannon you will require the aid of either a spudger or of course a flat headed screwdriver just to get this out of the compartment but this is now going to dip down and inside there are two slots here and then in here that these two tabs will peg into so i line those up snap that there into place this section here will come down and will also snap into place incredibly securely we can then spin our attention to the side fold out these tabs come to this side flip out that tab and then now it is just a matter of rotating these ratchet joints here all the way around of course repeat the same process here for this side ensure that everything is straightened out 
And now just to showcase what's gonna go on here, you can see this is perfectly cut out to fit into this section. And then this huge tab will peg here into this slot. And then these circular tabs will peg here into this slot. So it can take a tiny bit of aligning to get everything in the correct position, but just snap that in. And then as we flip here to this side, just ensure that, that there does peg into place. Come here to this side and rinse and repeat. Sure that that circular tab does align up here with that slot. And then we just come here to the top. This here will go like so. In regards to this section, we'll just set that there off to the side, bring in the massive fusion cannon, and you can see how we've got that tab and the slot here in the center. So rotate this around, snap that there into place. This here will come over the top. And there we have Mega Tank fully transformed up in, of course, his tank mode. Now, as mentioned in robot mode, considering this guy is completely conceptualized, I think Monocrat have done a fantastic job in taking what is already a really well-known established alt mode for Megatron and implementing it here into this figure. That, of course, being the Cybertronian tank that we've really seen Megatron obtain quite a few times now in recent years. And much like robot mode, this definitely fits in with the live action movie aesthetic down to a T. I think they've done a fantastic job and it really does doesn't compromise the look of the robot mode at all. Now you can see as far as Cybertronian tanks are concerned, I actually think this is one of the better ones I've seen. It definitely destroys anything that we saw from the Siege War for Cybertron show and much like in robot mode, the paintwork is just exceptional. So this time around we've got that enormous fusion cannon slap bang in the center which literally looks as if though it would annihilate an entire fleet of Autobots had they come into its path. You can see the detailing and the dry brushing, the attention to detail for some of the these components here is just mesmerizing and even as we spin our attention here to the back I actually don't think this looks too bad at all I guess in some regards you could kind of think that these were perhaps thrusters so that's definitely quite a cool way to look at things and from a side-on perspective you can see how the treads come together I love how certain components of the robot mode actually shift and how cohesive they look when being put in their new tank form and overall it's just a very very well engineered and really well detailed looking piece even from a front on perspective you can see the attention to detail looks really nicely done if i were to be nitpicky the solid plastic that we've got here for the ratchet joints kind of stick out if you look at it here from a dead on front on perspective but overall that really is just a minor critique in the grand scheme of things i think they've done a fantastic job now in regards to the led function as we saw earlier on if we push this button it will cause that fusion cannon to illuminate a really really intimidating burning orange which once again I think looks fantastic and as we flip here to the underside you will notice that he has got a total of six wheels which when all rotating together do in fact actually allow him to glide along the ground with some great ease so in all I think this is a great alternate mode to accompany an even better looking robot mode and let's be honest despite the tank mode looking this well done nine times out of ten we're all going to display our mega tank in his robot mode. And so some final thoughts for the Monocrat Mega Tank, also known as a live action movie interpretation of not Megatron had he appeared in Transformers Bumblebee. Overall, as mentioned previously, I was super excited for this release and I can tell you guys that it has absolutely delivered. In regards to the actual design itself, it looks fantastic. It really does look as if though it was actually based on some unused concept art from the Bumblebee movie. I think that Monocrat have done a fantastic job in taking that G1 Megatron design, but much like some of those G1 inspired characters that we actually saw on screen have truly captured him in a live action movie aesthetic. I think the attention to detail on this guy is fantastic and this is exactly how I would want live action movie Megatron to look if he were to appear in another movie. I think the attention to detail in the robot mode is fantastic. Not only is the sculpt work mesmerizing but the paintwork is some of the best I've ever seen for a third party company. I love the wear and tear that we've got going on with certain components. I think that the metallic silver fade looks incredible. You'll notice that certain areas have been picked out in either a darker gun metal to kind of give you this battle war-torn appearance or perhaps as if though they've been charred or burnt in battle. I think the dry brushing where the fusion cannon is concerned is mesmerizing and the joints are in fact all really really well done. I was super surprised to see just how many ratchet joints are packed into this figure as in regards to the official mainline that's something that we don't really tend to see all that often so this third party company have definitely brought ratchet joints back and back with a bang. I think in regards to posability besides some minor qualms that I may have in regards to the ankles I once again 
and think that he's really well done. The arms you can literally get into any pose that you want, the incorporation of an ab crunch I thought was genius, and the range of motion in the head sculpt is fantastic. And whilst we're talking about head sculpt, we may as well delve into accessories. I think the sword, whilst is a nice inclusion, personally isn't something that I'm likely to display with this guy on the shelf, but it definitely has been painted and sculpted beautifully. I do like the alternate head sculpt that we get. So not only do we get this more stern, more traditional, angry looking face from Megatron, but we get this more maniacal grin slash smirk, which I thought was a great attention to detail. And both of the head sculpts do in fact actually come equipped with LEDs. The transformation isn't all that complex. Upon first glance, the instructions will make it out to be so much more of a nightmare than it actually is. And once you get the hang of the actual order of steps, he's actually quite fun to transform back from robot and tank and of course vice versa. And as mentioned previously, I think the tank mode fits this guy down to a T. They really have done a fantastic job. Once again, they've taken what has now become an incredibly well established alt mode for Megatron and put it within the live action movie aesthetic. I think it perfectly suits this particular Bumblebee movie incarnation of Megatron and really would love to see this exact design on the silver screen. So with all that being said, I cannot sing this guy's praises enough. He's undoubtedly one of the better third party pieces that I've reviewed so far and it's definitely going to take some figure to in fact actually top this mega tank. With all that being said, for those of you who are after adding this guy to the collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at Shozy store. So for that, of course, I shall pack a link down in the description box below. And of course, please feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, I thank you guys all so much for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.